terrorists, we're not no gangsters, we revolutionaries, and that's how we rock. So now, again, Stress had already built a situation where he got niggas mad at him and got niggas mad and want to do something to him. But they really can't just take off and do nothing to him without going through the procedures or, or, or without talking to either myself or Hook. So they can't just step to our young homie and think they're going to just do something to Stress. So, bam. G.I.'s leaves. Now, Oz is gone. Like I said, Stress' little situation fell through. I pick up the slack. We rolling again. Our shit is popping. Now, the story the homie told and how he told it, this is why I'm going back in and revamping it because he missed a whole lot of shizit. And so now, what really led up to an actual standoff and us actually really going there because the situation was stretched and this one particular nigga who was into it, who didn't want to pay, they should have just locked up in the cell and got down, which we didn't get to that level because the APBs and the Millers decided they wanted to plot. Like, like he told the story, it was 15, 16 of us, not 17. And then it was about 13, no, about 12 of us because a couple of little homies caught the chain and went home. So our numbers shrank. So it was like, it's literally like 12 of us, six and six each cell. We, we lost our floor sleepers. So that made our numbers go down. So <clears throat> during this time, Stretch and the one particular nigga who literally owed the money, who called himself, and the crazy part about I, I want to name this dude name, and I know him. He's a, he's a young homie, and I know this nigga because I used to fuck his sister. I used to fuck with his sister. I was fucking with his sister and another homegirl, both of them, and they ran together. So they, they was my little chicks back then in, in the day. So I used to fuck with both of them. So the little homie who was coming up in the ranking for Miller's in that cell with them, who the situation was created behind, the nigga was just with us. He hung out with us every goddamn day in the projects. So it was crazy to us that he was tripping out like he tripped out with stress because nigga, you was just in the projects with us before you got, you got arrested in the projects for your case. You got busted in our hood, not your hood. What the fuck wrong with you nigga in here tripping like you trying to trip? So that's what put us on edge. Especially me because I knew the young nigga. Knew him, knew him. And I fucked with his sister. And I was disappointed because I'm like, if anything, you know, he the type of young nigga got a, got a smooth head on his shoulder to the point where he going to be like, oh, no, man. And try to simmer this shit between us, them, and the APBs. Nah. Then you had Ty Man was in the cell with them as well. Same thing. Ty Man come up under us. I bet I've been knowing Ty Man as a young nigga. Ty Man is a good young nigga. Good nigga. Solid. Rider. Me and Ty Man was just on the street, out of town, beating up shit. Me and that nigga was just in two straight bar brawls. Bar brawls. One in Kansas City, man. In my in my hometown, nigga. We was in a bar brawl with some brothers, some gangsters. Got into a shootout, niggas in a bar brawl with about 30 niggas. And it was only me, Ty Man to sleep, nigga, from Anson's Park. In there, welling on niggas, getting down. So I was shocked when I seen the young homies. I'm like, you niggas in here trying to set trip, bro? It's me, nigga. It's, it's me, bro. It's me. So the night we in our cell, we smoking, we blowing, we going up. We got the whole fucking tear lit up, niggas. All niggas do a smell. Hey, man, could a nigga get a little something? Hey, Buddy Hunters. You heard niggas holler. Hey, Buddy Hunters. Hey, Hook. Hey, BJ. I got a kite coming down. Who is that? It's such and such. All right. You feel me? So we're in that motherfucker blowing. The little homies and stretching them decide to make peanut butter. They finna make peanuts. So we got the peanut butter packs. They come in our lunches? Yeah. Stretch take the packs and he's slamming that motherfucker up against the thing. Boom! Boom! And on the floor. Boom! Now, mind you, it's 10, 11 o'clock at night now. It's going into Usalama time. Usalama is when the tear calls Usalama and it's supposed to be QT, 
quiet time on the whole tier. And that goes for everybody. That rule goes for everybody. Not just the Bonnie Hunters. Every hood in there goes on Usalama, meaning you, you keep your noise now at a minimum. You talk among your celly. Or if you talk to the cell next door, then you got to talk through the crack of the gate or talk at the bars to the homie next door, whispering. You can't be loud. And that's because it was a it's it's a protocol that stood for the whole entire module, a protocol of respect because it allows and give others time to sleep for that quick three or four hours of sleep that they only gonna get before four o'clock come and they bust these lights on our ass and holler, court time, child time, court time. And they come in and get niggas out at three in the morning and four in the morning to take them to the court line. So we allow ourselves to get sleep, bruh. Because some niggas will stay up all night, all day, or stay up all night and then try to sleep in the daytime. So we changed them rulings early in the game, back in the early days in the modules, where a nigga had to get up in the morning, roll that motherfucking mattress up, put it on the edge of your bed, nigga, and we all up all day. I don't give a fuck if we ain't coming out this cell. A nigga cannot lay down and go to sleep and take a nap. If it's a certain time and a certain time that you can break that mattress down and now you can lay down and relax. And that go for every cell, every hood, every blood, including the Crips had the same protocol, including the Mexicans. South sides, the A, a B, uh, every nigga. This is a protocol in the system, period, bro. This ran like this. And so we make it peanut butter. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with Buttercup and the shit. You know, I'm trying to have me some phone sex and Buttercup. Got my curtain pulled back. I'm high. I'm sipping on my Pruno. And all the time, this nigga stretching there making peanut butter, but he's slamming that motherfucker against the thing. Boom! First, he was on the floor, which is concrete. So it sounds like this. Pat! Pat! Then he took it and looked up and threw it on the steel, the, the steel up there, which runs through the bar. Boom! So it echoed, bling, 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 like a bling noise. Yeah. So, just ironic, the same ninja who he's into it with, the nigga who he's into it with, the nigga who he already got words with about his money, this nigga take the boldness on his, up on his stuff to say, hey, blood, hey, who is that down there, blood? Straight say, why? I'm saying, who is that with the noise, homie? Niggas trying to go to sleep. We, we got to go to court in the morning. Stress say, okay, and? He said, I'm just saying, blood, that's 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 disrespectful, homie. Stress said, boom. Threw the motherfucker on there again. Boom. Blood say, oh, blood, it's like that. Stress said, nigga, you heard what it is, nigga. Let the gates be the bell. Once again, put us in a situation. Us, meaning the whole bunny on the car. When he went down there and said what he said to the niggas the first time, again, now mind you, damn near, it's almost four or five days that he lapsed since that incident occurred when G. Eyes was here when Stretch went and got at them niggas verbally. So these niggas are already mad and feeling some kind of way. When they came out a couple of times, that they came out, niggas went to visits, and niggas had to go to court, they walked walk by a cell looking a certain kind of way. That very same cat that told the story came out and, ho and hollered at Hook for a second, because he knew Hook. He knew me too, but he preferably preferred to holler at Hook because he knew Hook. You feel me? A lot of niggas wasn't going to talk to me, wasn't going to say nothing to me, because niggas knew I'm that nigga nigga, and niggas know if he go, if this nigga decide to go, go and set trip, it's a wrap. Them bunny hunters going, all of them. Every last one of them. Clue and Hook, they all going. Cause that's his road dog. Him and Hook is like this. Feel me? Them the HK boys. Them the HK crimes, them the HK boys, man. So we back at it again. Crimes again. We back in it again. We in a situation again together. He facing 25 to life. I'm facing 40 to life, bro. You feel me? So yeah. now, like I say, stress, boom. So now, stress put the disrespect down again on him. Like let the gates be the bell. Now, we not knowing they already intricate plotting on Stretch. Not the Bonnie Hunter car in general, but Stretch. But now them niggas that came to their senses to know, well, shit, blood, we're going to have to take it to the Bonnie Hunters too, man. We got to get get at the whole car because them niggas ain't finna just let us do something to Stretch 
and it ain't gonna be no repercussions. You know who down there in that cell? I mean, that's that nigga BJ and Hook down there together. When them two niggas is together, it's a problem, man. It's a problem. Whenever them niggas together, whether it's on the streets or in the system, it can become a problem, bro. A problem. Because them niggas is like this. And they going to go. You feel me? And all yeah. the rest going with them. So I got one question, though, Cap. Sure. Why do you why do you think Stretch was uh, like on 10? Like, like the tension was already the tension was already high with the first situation with the money. All right. well, Every, like you said, everybody know the Usalama, the, the Usalama rule. Mm -hmm. why, 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 why do you think he was bucking on that rule to upset the upset everybody else that that well, wasn't in the bunny hunter car? Well, just you know me, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm be honest, I'm, I'm uncut. You know I don't sugarcoat shit. But the bottom line was, at that time, the young homie was coming up in his ranking. He was building his name. And Stretch was on his real set trip tip. You feel me? Okay. okay. And the and reason why I can say that and understand it, because that was once me. I was a young nigga, young Bonnie Hunter. Wow. And I was a major set tripper. Major. You feel me? It's a lot of yeah. shit started behind me. A lot of shit was created behind me, man. You feel me? So I understood his situation. Set tripper, and because you know, like I said before, Hook got there. You know, he was feeling himself probably more, more likely because he was maintaining the car. So you know, here go a young nigga who got a little, you know, can step up to the plate right now. You know, ain't no OGs in here. He the only young nigga, and the young niggas is looking up to him. So it's like he feeling good right now. But then he'll come in and that over proceed everything. That shuts that down. Then I come in. You feel me? So that shuts that all down. So when he um, made his statement, his statement was the, basically the argument was really between them two over the, over the tier now out loud because the individual who took the time to say what he said, nigga, you the one that owed the money. You the one that already got a problem with the young homie. Why is you even speaking to him right now like that and fouling out a line? So that puts stretch on defense mode. So now they... Gotcha. They exchanged words over the tear a couple of times, and that's when Stress said, nigga, let the gates be the bell, blood. Nigga say, say what? You heard what I said, nigga. That's what, that was Stress' last words. You heard what I said, nigga. Boom. You can hear a needle drop. The whole tear got quiet. At that time, we in ourselves now. Niggas is whispering and talking amongst ourselves. The homies is talking. Boom, boom, boom. We lay it on out. Go to sleep. I jump right up in early in the morning like I do. I'm up before the whole entire cell. I'm already up. When they get ready to start calling court line at 3 a.m., 3.30, going into 4 o'clock, I'm the point man that's always up early in the morning. So I stand guard early in the morning for the homies to sleep until that breakfast count come. Once that first breakfast call come, then the whole cell got to wake up. Everybody get up, wash up, brush their face, wash their face, brush their teeth, bust down. We up for breakfast. After breakfast, I run a I run a, a bust down program. We bust down. We get down. We exercise. I do my push ups first thing in the morning. When I wake up, I knock out five hundred while these niggas is asleep. So by the time we get ready to do our bust down, I done did my push ups. I got them out the way. So now I got to do is knock out my burpees with with the homies. And primarily, me and DB really used to go in because DB was a workout fanatic like me. That's the little baby homie, DB, the, the homegirl bacon son. And so DB was in there for a hot one. I helped the homie DP, DB beat his case and get him released. So I helped DB. I helped two of my little homies overturn their cases, beat their cases, and they got out. And fucked around, DB went back for another hot one out of state. After I helped him get out of his this hot one, he went back for another hot one. Now he's doing life out of state. Damn. So, <clears throat> so, um, so we like I say, I, I wake up early that morning, busting down, boom. We busting down, doing our thing. It's our feeds. The homies, TD, we and them, they come out, they feeding, they feeding. Come down, shoot some kites. Stretch to get a kite. Boom. They talking about the incident again. So stress like blood. These niggas with that shit blood. They want them shit, talking that shit blood. We want, so we tell the nigga blood, listen. We want to holler at the niggas and see what's happening with it. 
and see what these niggas gonna do if they gonna just pay the money. And so, bam, we trying to give them a little time to get it together because one nigga was willing to pay his money. So we wait for the nigga who stretched and the cat that I told you that we know him, he was just with us to pay his half. But he on some old trying to be cocky type shit now. You know, he like trying to stick his chest out and show out now because he in there with his homies. So, um, okay. So they integral plot. We don't know this. We don't have the slightest idea that these niggas is in here setting up, getting ready to set us up, bro. And they got me on the integral plot. Not only just stress now, they got me on the integral plot, huh? <laughs> How the hell you get at it? <laughs> Good question. Well, the reason why I was so-called supposedly be at it, but niggas didn't act on it. Niggas was mad at me from the anti side and some Millers because of a personal situation that took place in-house on the streets, which I'm not going to, you know, name no names or even speak on it. But so niggas call themselves mad. And these, gotcha. are all, these are all young niggas under this individual. So they call themselves mad or, or, or trying to, you know, uh, pick up the slack for their homie, more or less, right? Gotcha. So we don't get it beat. And if we get it beat, nigga, that's points. We get to that nigga, that's point points. You feel me? Yeah. Oh, you niggas ain't getting no points off this here, man. It ain't going to happen, my nigga. I ain't going to allow it. So, in that process, they integral plotting. But now, like I say, niggas really ain't trying to fuck with me and Hook. It ain't me and Hook beef. It ain't the little homies beef. They really, really just want to get it stretched because they feel like Stretch came down there and really violated them verbally. None of the other bunny hunters didn't violate us, bro. Bunny Hunter BJ, Bunny Hunter Hook, LB Hook didn't violate us. None of, one, none of, none of one of them came down here and said, fuck us, fuck you niggas, none of that. That ain't how they get at. If them niggas have a problem, them niggas going to be direct. So they really didn't feel like it was no fault with us. But they knew because of the Bunny Hunter protocol, there's no way we're going to be able to do nothing to stress, bro. And BJ and Renzi ain't going to say nothing. Bullshit. So Blood had a relationship with Hook. Like he said, he grew up under Hook. He's been knowing Hook for some years. It's like he know me. But he was more comfortable with Hook to rather deal with me. He was more comfortable. So that's why he talked to Hook and spoke to Hook. But what he failed to realize and what he forgot was when you came down there to the cell to talk, you never talked to Diamond Red because Diamond Red was never in that cell. Diamond Red was never, never in either one of them cells. Diamond Red was never on that module with us. Diamond Red and Hook is just like when I describe Green Eyes and Rat Dog. You will never see that. You will never see them together together unless we in a situation or we in jail like that. And we got to go to battle because we all homies. But as far as just chilling and together together, that's not a situation you would see, bro, because... They don't mix. So I know for a fact Diamond Red wasn't in that cell. Now, you probably been talking about when Diamond Red was down there in the county jail before he got caught up and went, caught the chain and went and got started his life sentence. That can be true. You may have been talking about then. But when me and Renzi was there, Renzi was never in the cell with Diamond Red, homie. And you never sit down with you and Ty Man and talk to Renzi and Diamond Red. That was me and Ty Man. And you and Renzi, and it wasn't no sit down. You came down to the cell, like you said, and you didn't never tell Hook, move that stuff out the way, take that stuff down. You came down, you whispered, you called Renzi's name, Hook said, Who is that, blood? You called out your name, Hook stepped up to the cell, he pulled the newspaper to the side, what's happening? And he said, Blood. He said, Man, let's talk, let me talk to you, Hook. And when he pulled the newspaper down, I could see Ty Man. And when I seen Ty Man, I walked up to the bars. And I walked up to the boss and I started talking to Tom, man. T, what's up, blood? He said, what's up, big homie? We started talking to Tom. He was like, blood, I don't know, man. And so Tom, man, started acting kind of funny with me. He was talking to me at first. Then he started kind of acting funny. And then he brought up the situation of what I'm talking about, the personal situation. He brought up that with me. I said, oh, blood, you got, you, you got, like, you got an attitude about that shit and stuff, Tom, man? Like, like you got something to do with it, nigga? And so that's when we had words about it. And so from there, they left. We put our shit back up. So now, 
bring us to the actual altercation and what took place, what happened, man. So like I said, now we're in our cells, we're doing our things, we just separated ourselves, um, we, we didn't hog our shit down. We got two, we ended up getting two kites dropped on us. Two kites got dropped on us, bro. We got hit. They hit us, they smashed on us. They didn't catch the bug, they didn't get our weed, they didn't get our drugs, and they didn't get our weed because I had a I had a certain stash spot, a, a certain way to keep that shit. Feel me? Now, and BJ, I, explain, explain to the people when you said you got two kites dropped on you. Okay, what I mean by getting two kites dropped on us, niggas dropped two kites on us, meaning they dropped the letter to the to the COs, to the police, and told the police the bunny hunters got massive weapons. Them niggas got massive weapons. And what happened, Unc, was, remember when I told you about the Liz Isaac with the K-Swizzes, it's the Shizus, right? Yeah. See, remember I tell you niggas about this is power. And I was so shrewd with it, bro. So when that dude told the story and he said, the bounty hunters barred up, they they, they, they gated up their bars and they, they walled up their bars with newspaper and mattresses. That was all me. That shit was all my structure, all my doing. And every nigga on that tour, tier knew it. And them niggas down there in APB and Miller Gangsters knew it. That's why the nigga, when he said, oh, we knew who was in that cell. I knew for a fact. That's why he specified and stressed that. He said, I know for a fact them bounty hunters ain't PCing up, homie. I know who in them cells down there. And we know who them two niggas is in that cell down there. And he said hook name, but he just didn't say mine. He really wanted to say that nigga BJ and Hook. And that nigga BJ is a warrior. That nigga's a warrior thinker. This is his tactics right here. This is his get down. This is his MO. So niggas already knew. So the bottom line was the kites got dropped on us by the COs. We get hit late night. They come through, they hit us. Boom. They take a couple of our knives. They get about four knives off of us that night. So they, they drain us. So we weaponless. We ain't got no weapons. So now... The next shipment I'm finna get coming in on visit, I call Pookie back. I do another move. I tell him instead of putting the the, the pizzackages in this these particular shizus, I said I need you to take the whole flat bottom off, take the bottom off, take it back to my guy, go to the store, go to the 99 cent store, go to the store and get us like four or five steak knives. He go, huh? I said get these eight knives, man, Pookie. He go, nigga, how you gonna get them shits? I say, simple. The same way we got the visa. You feel me? I said, all he gonna do, my boy gonna take all the wooden handles off. He gonna take them handles off. All I need is the steak knife metal, the whole knives, and they flat. Nigga, I got like eight of them motherfuckers to us. Can't fuck with me, huh? These niggas can't fuck with my tactics, bro. I'm dangerous, man. I got like eight of them motherfuckers sent to us. Boom. Hook, re hook them back up. The motherfuckers are straight knives. We got real steak knives. I had one alone, the big kitchen steak knife like this. And then I had the original ones like this. Then we shot kites upstairs to some of my niggas I knew, my uncut niggas that fuck with me heavy. We bought shit. So I ended up buying a motherfucking, uh, excuse my French. Trying to use some as a demo. But anyway, in prison, our bunks were shaped all metal and steel, right? Yeah. At the bottom, very bottom of a bunk, uh, it used to be this steel bar that runs under the bottom. A steel bar, is, and the bar was about this thick. And it runs right up under the bottom of the bunk, right? Yeah. So you can used to grab that bar, and we used to do our curls like this on the bunk. On the bed, if you land down on your bed, yeah, and, then, and we used to cook and sit the toilet paper between there. I shot a kite upstairs, asking my homies, niggas got any metal for sale? Niggas told me we got you, B. So I spent about a hundred dollars and bought a motherfucking pipe, about the size of my thumb and width, and about this much in length, while I was able to bust it into two. It took me three days. I carved that bitch 
And I finally got it to where we was able to bend it and break it. And it took about three of us in the cell going back and forth, back and forth, up to my hours. And I got it hot and cold. And all the time I'm doing this, my young homie's in that motherfucker like a sponge learning from me. Like the big homie is this, this motherfucker, some MacGyver type shit, man, B. And I busted, boom, boom. Now I got us two pieces. I took that bitch and I carved it into a Phillips screwdriver shape. To a Phillips screwdriver head, like my finger. Bam, bam, bam. I had that motherfucker, the little DB. You couldn't prime that some bitch from DV from that from that day on. DB kept that motherfucker in his nuts. DB with the visit with that big motherfucker. Shower, everything on point. And I had my young niggas on soldier mode. So now we back strapped, huh? But before we before we get ready to get them, they hit us again. Get all the state knives. So now what they do, OSJ come in, they lay all our shit out on the tier and take pictures and lay all our shit out on the tier in front of everybody on the tier for all them niggas to see, for the enemies to see our shit. And them niggas is going like this. God damn. Oh, shit. So they drag the motherfucker down the tier. Niggas going, blood, blood, you see that shit? Blood, blood. Them goddamn bunny hunters, them niggas had real knives down there, man. God damn, blood. Them niggas had real, them, them niggas got swords down there, blood. <laughs> they drained us, huh? Yeah. Guess what we got left? What's that? Only thing we got left is them two AKs, man. Them pipes. The ones I, I done shaped into. They this long with a screwdriver head on it, but this long with a handle. Yeah. When a nigga hit a nigga with this, he gone. Nigga hit a nigga in the head, temple, face, anywhere. He out here. He gonna have a hole busting his ass this big. He out here, leaking. And DB was aggressive, forcibly aggressive, and a strong young nigga. It hits hard. And I told DB, anything move, nigga, you make sure you knock that nigga head off. He said, I got it, big homie. I got it. Anything moving, I'm gonna knock his head off, big homie. And that's how DB slept with that motherfucker. So when they hit us, that's the only two weapons we had left. It was them two. That's it, bro. I got to recoup again. But we don't have no time because the plot goes down. Before I can get back to Pluki to get another visit set up for us, the plot goes down, bro. So I get called out on a visit. Me, Stretch, my little homie, which the dude used in the um, story, he said Gator, which he got to be talking about Wally Gator, not OG Gator, because OG Gator wasn't on the tier neither. And if OG Gator was there, nigga, that's the big homie over me and Hook. He our big homie. So Gator was Gator's deceased. So he was talking about Wally. Wally is an alcoholic. But he had a young homie. Wally got green eyes and Wally came in drunk. So Wally was only coming in for a minute because he had a warrant. So Wally was going to be released too. So Wally come through that night. Wally get a visit that morning. That day when we go out for a visit, Wally get called out for a visit. Now mind you, Wally ain't been there 24 hours. He's sobering up from drinking. So Wally is a floor sleeper. So they shackle us up, take us down. Now mind you, the way they running this procedure right now is all new to me in the blood model. All blood, from the 4,300 blood models all the way to the 3,000 days in the early days when I ran the structure of the blood models and other bloods, man, I, our procedures were just different. So this particular blood module procedure and the way they run their structure was totally different and new to me. How the movement was, how they was bringing us out to and forth and how they was taking us to visit and everything. And because a lot of niggas really didn't get along, it was a lot of uncut and cut situations. And so you couldn't put a lot of bloods together no more. So niggas stayed on lockdown. So everybody was separated and segregated. So when I came out, when I came out to get my visit, they shackled me all up with shackles, like if I'm going to court. I said, damn, that's how they take us to visit. So they handcuff you backwards like this with your handcuff, but with your hands like this, um. Damn. So you ain't got action like this. Your hands is like this backwards. Right? I ain't never seen that one before. 
Yeah, so that's how they cuff you backwards. And so now, and that's why I'm tripping, like, what the fuck is this? So we walk down like this backwards, come back the same way. So the whole time we going down, bro, it's black pea stones, a couple of swans, a miller gangster, two miller gangsters, swans, and two, two APBs on this chain. It's about nine of us all together. I want to say at least nine, if not more. I know it's, it's at least about nine to seven of us on this chain going down to visit. We all coming back. Check out the setup. And I told Stretch Ass, when we coming back, and this was Super Bowl weekend, Super Bowl, Super Bowl was finna come in a couple of days. This was Super Bowl month in January, bro. And so uh, we on the chain coming back up. All of a sudden, niggas start talking about the game and Super Bowl. I don't give a fuck about no Super Bowl right now. A1, I'm on Usalama, and I'm paying attention to my surroundings on what's going on because I feel some attention. Something ain't right. My prison intuitions then kicked in as a leader, man, and something not right with me. So I'm on straight point. I'm listening to these niggas' conversation, and I look, and I read, and I peep it. I say, stretch, stretch, stretch a dollar, because he was way up front playing with niggas, running behind niggas like this, cuffing their handcuffs, clicking their handcuffs tighter. So he went to Wally, and by the time he got to the homie Wally, he snapped Wally's shit. I said, blood, stretch. He turned around, I said, blood, check it out, blood. Blood, what is you doing? Blood, stop playing like that, blood. What is you doing? He go, oh, yeah, yeah, you right, B. You right, big homie. I said, blood, listen, blood. I said, look, the nigga such and such just ran to the front of the bar, blood. Get to the front, man, and get your cuffs off, man, and go home, man. He said, all right, big homie, all right. So he stepped up in front of a black pea stone. The homie went straight in the gate first. Instead of him turning around into the gate, to let the police take his cuff off. The police ran all of us in the gate now. He said, oh, y'all, come on in. The rest of the blues, come in. Step in the shower. So they ran us in the shower. So now we all in the shower with handcuffs on. The homie who get his handcuff off, he step out first and go straight to the cell. Another homie flank out and go to the bar, but Stress jumps out and go to the bar instead. And Stress throw his hands in there and they take Stress cuffs off. So as they taking stretch cuffs off, I come to the bar. As I'm coming to the bar, the nigga who told the story, Lil Mount, Lil Mousy from APB, and the nigga who told the story, now that's the only name I mentioned because he was the only little bitty nigga by five feet to try to come run back with handcuffs on and kick stretch in the head. Stretch never got stomped out. He never got rat packed by nobody, bro. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation. So Stress was getting his cuffs off. The one homie, which I like I say, I ain't gonna name no name, but he, he was from S Gang. He wasn't even from APB. He was from S Gang. He was, and he was a young hitter, a known hitter from S Gang. He went straight to the S Gang cell, nigga, which was cell one, two, and three, was, was swines, eight, nine families, and then in the back was families, APBs, and Miller Gangsters, and then in the middle was Peblos. And the bottoms, the villains, you feel what I'm saying? And then us. So he went straight to his cell. When he went to his cell, he stuck his feet in the bar gate like that. And them niggas, you heard the cuffs go, ting, 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 ting. And they dropped on the ground. He was out of his shit. I said, stretch, go home. Hook was calling my name at the time. I couldn't get out the shower. I peeked my head out, and he was trying to get my attention. So I told stretch, hit the wall. Stretch it down, hit the wall. So Stretch looked at me and did like this, nodded his head, and that's when he hit the wall on him. If I wouldn't have signaled Stretch, the nigga would have had him in a better position because Stretch wouldn't have seen it coming. But I gave the young homie heads up, and I signaled him, take your ass home, man. And he hit the wall. He said, all right, big homie. And he turned around, and he hit the wall. And when he hit the wall, the nigga peeled off the gate on Stretch. And stretch fire, bing, 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 bing. And while stretch trying to fire, stretch is falling, and the nigga hit the stretch, bing, bing. So at this time, I takes off. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do, but fuck it, they gonna have to stab me up too with my young homie. I takes off. I got my handcuffs like this, huh? And I take off. So when I go to take off, here they come. They block me. Here come two APBs, a Miller, and somebody else. They blocked me. So now here we are. We standing in the middle of the tier, and we fighting like this. 
with our head but our shoulders. We fighting just like this. I'm trying to get through these niggas to get to my homie to get down to the tier. I can't get by him. By this time, just in that split second, because it only lasts for a couple of seconds, a seconds, not even a minute. So the stress going at it with the nigga. Blah, 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 blah. So stress falling. Stress falling. And finally, bam, the police hit the tier. Get down. Get down. Get down. I just kept going down the tier as they said, me to get down. I kept going to the cell. But before the police get there, let me re back up real quick. Before the police get there, I take that back. Let me revamp. Before the police actually hit the tier, like I say, stretching dude going at it. Bam, 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 bam. Stretch finally get it loose and break wide. Get to the cell, they had stretch the AK. Now, stretch got action. He got a choice. But that choice is going to lead him to a real body, and he's going to really have a case now in front of the police because he got to go comic college, y'all. Nigga just hit you. Go down there and get yours back, nigga. Fuck the police. So Stretch turned around, took the thing back, and handed it back to the homies. By this time, the police had hit the tear. Laid us all down. Boom, boom, boom. Laid us all down. Shot us back in our cells. Then came down to our cells and took the shackles and the handcuffs off of us. This is what happened to little Stress, bro. Stress never got stomped out. He never got rat packed by no by no uh, group of cats because it didn't even go down like that. We didn't even had that kind of action. So now Stress, they moved on Stretch. So now when they moved on Stretch, oh, that created a war amongst the bounty hunters now because y'all violated me and Renzi. Y'all done, done violated me and Renzi. A1, y'all put a move down while a general was on that chain. See, it could have been Rizzy on that chain just as well as it had been me. They violated once I was on that chain. See, they should they could have waited. They said, no, they, this ain't the best time to make that move. BJ on the chain, man. That's going to cause friction on top of friction. No, this ain't the best time. They moved on anyway. Niggas like, fuck it. They was feeling themselves. You feel me? Yeah. And so they moved on it. And so they, they hit Stretch. Stretch got hit about 12, about 12, 13 times. He got, hit, he got poked with something like this. Like my finger, plastic though. But when you moving and your adrenaline flowing and you fighting, you don't really know until after the fact of what you're getting poked with. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And then luckily for him, fortunately for him, that he has some fight in him. Cause a normal nigga, when you get hit, he panic or holler, scream, or run or try to break wide. Then nigga hitting you in your back of your head and in your back, chasing your ass down. Stress spin right on him. When a nigga spent off the gate on him, because I'm already on my little homie. I'm already on his ass telling him to go home, pay attention. As soon as I told him that, he said, I got you. And he turned around and said, I got you, big homie. And he turned around and he hit the wall. And as he sliding on the wall, he peeped it coming. So stress take right back off. Bing, bing. And stress let off on two of them on it. Bing, bing. And the nigga let back off. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, bing, bing. So remind you, nigga, the niggas got stressed by look by a couple of inches. Because stretch is a tall young nigga at this time and still growing. But the young homie who's a hitter got stretched about two inches in height and got him in weight. And he fresh down from the pen already on life sentence. So he ain't got shit to lose. Nothing. You feel me? Yeah. So his whole aggressive was on some kill, kill, kill shit when he peeled off that gate. That was his intentions. So when he peeled, stretch caught him and they locked Stretch break, like I said, go get the AK, come back. Then he bring the AK, come back, lay it down, they lay it down. We in the cell now. So, bam, boom. Now we in the cell. I start trial two days after the incident occurred. I start trial, bro. I got to go to trial. I'm going to start my 12 for 12. I'm in 12 for 12 now. I got to start go pick my jury. I go pick my jury. I'm in my 12 for 12. I go to CCB. They shipped me to Van Nuys. I said, oh, my goodness. It was already worse. I was at CCB. Now y'all going to ship me to Van Nuys, man. Yeah, they going to hit me with this 40 for real, for real. So <clears throat> I go to pick my jury. I come back from court. Bam. We have a meeting. The homies tell me what was going on. There's some friction. And Hook, you know, Hook shared his kite with me. One of the homies had wrote to us and was giving us heads up, man. Hey, man. Niggas is plotting on y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all plot, plotting on y'all, man. Watch out. If y'all need anything, man, let us know, B. Let us know, Hook. 
So all our homies that we was hooked up with, just like the homie said when he told his side of the story, niggas was playing both sides. We had niggas coming to us, telling us shit, and we had cats going to them, telling them shit. We had niggas providing knives to us. You had niggas providing knives to them because they wanted to see the war. They wanted to see this shit go up. The bounty hunters? You mean to tell me we finally going to be able to overpower these niggas? We going to finally be able to get some get back on these niggas? That's how niggas was in here thinking at this time, huh? Out of all these years, we finna get some get back. And not only are we gonna get get back, we got one of the primary number one niggas in here. Bonnie Hunter BJ. Yeah. 